I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. Well, last week we had the opportunity to interview and meet with Sherry Wallace, and what a delightful lady. Well, we now have her other half. Uh, appreciate you coming, Jared Wallace. Appreciate you coming, and she spoke so highly of you, and uh, you've had such an interesting story. Tell us a little bit about your early days. You weren't actually a Mormon, born Mormon either. Is no, that right? I, you were. I wasn't. I uh, didn't grow up uh, with too much church activity, you know, in, in, in the home or in the family. Yeah. I remember some some vacation Bible school. I remember uh, going on some church camps, you know, really? things like that. Uh, a, a basic had a basic concept of. God and, and Jesus was his son. He died yeah. on the cross for us. You know, the Bible is true. But uh, as, as far as those things being, you know, emphasized or talked about regularly at home, it, it, it wasn't very much. Wow, and, interesting. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so I joined the church when I was 18 years old. I got uh, married way too young. Yeah, oh, did you? <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, so while I was gone to my, uh, to basic training in the Army, uh, we had sister missionaries in the area. Oh. And so... Spoke uh, with your wife, did they? They, they came <laughs> and, and were, were meeting with her. Yeah. You know, they were similar age, so they yeah. could kind of hang out together. Yeah. And uh, she, I remember her writing me and telling me some stuff about the church and these missionaries that she was meeting with. What did you think of that initially? Just you know, I mean, when you're when you're in that in that environment in the military, yeah. you're, you're kind of focused on that. But at the same sure. time, I was I was focused a lot uh, on God and on prayer and things like that because you know yeah. I, I did have some some church background, right. and so just praying that I would make it through all of that, you know, in <laughs> yeah. one piece. And so I didn't think too much of okay. it at the time, but uh, she waited for me. To, uh, to come back home and then uh, started having the missionaries over. We had we'd moved to my duty station and, and uh, the missionaries came and taught me the, the discussions and, and this, uh, this concept of one true church, this, this ultimate you know, church. Uh, the only true church. Yeah. Right, was, was appealing to me, you know, when there's this yeah. restoration from this boy and there's these, these men, you know, who are the, the earthly leaders, you know, and, and honestly, I, I really liked all the rules and regulations, all the do's and don'ts. I mean, uh, being, being young, a military guy. Yeah, coming out of, the, out of, right out of the, all that military training, obviously there's a yeah. lot, of, lot of rules yeah. there. So conforming to these set standards. Thought and that's the way God would have it, for sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. So, uh, so I, I was excited about it. Uh, we joined the church uh, together and uh, very quickly saw, saw some issues. Uh, that was with the missionaries who uh, baptized us. Uh, we were coming over to my house and they were hanging out like I'd come home for lunch or come home at the end of the day. And, and they were there at the house? They were there oh. hanging out at the house. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know at the time that they weren't supposed to do that oh. either without the man there. Especially when you're baptized now, they should right. be out proselyting or something. Right, like. right. Uh, a, a big one though was when the the companion, the two companions who actually baptized us, came over on their preparation day yeah. uh, to show us their uh, tattoos that, that they had <laughs> what? that they had just gotten. Yeah, yeah, they got uh, tattoos on, on up on their thighs so that nobody could see it. 
You oh know? my goodness. And so, you know, we kind of coupled that with That's getting to know strange. some people in the ward and and at the same time learning all about this, this new this new church and this new religion and then seeing that, that not everybody's not really work, you know, living it out the way that the, the church taught, you know. So pretty quickly speaking one thing and living a different way. Right. But, yeah. Right. So uh, so pretty quickly we, we said, you know, this is this is just a little bit strange, so we just kinda quit going after a few months. Oh. So they tried to fellowship you, I'm sure, and get you yeah. Act to active. And yeah, we had some missionaries stop by, had some home teachers, yeah. you know, on, on rare occasion, but yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I ended up uh, ended up actually getting a divorce uh, from my first wife after Ooh. just a couple of years, okay. and then moving back uh, back home to Missouri, so uh, kind of lost contact with and the church. And you didn't do anything church or Christian or anything at this point, I guess? No, no, not really. So then what happens? So then, uh, a few years after that, got reacquainted uh, with my wife. Uh, we knew each other uh, like 10 years before when we went to the same school as kids. Oh. And uh, so she was, was completely active. And this is Sherry. LDS. You'd, that's, you'd, that's and Sherry. She, at this point, she's active LDS. Oh, yeah. She, she's totally active. Oh, okay. And she's thinking, you know, I'm going to fellowship Jared and get him back <laughs> in the church also, you know. And uh, as life worked out and uh, she and I were getting close in a relationship, you know, she had five kids, I have one, I yeah. had one. We actually baby, we were each other's babysitters oh. for quite a while. <laughs> so, I mean, that was just kind of the next step, you yeah, know. And you would known each other 10 years nope. earlier, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I knew, it was, it was clear to me, if, if I'm going to be uh, her husband and I'm going to, you know, be the dad in, in this family, that I'm gonna have to go back to church. Uh, but even then, I, I remember back to my short time of activity, I, I believe that there was one true church. I believe sure. that it was the LDS church, yeah. you know, with not, without a, a solid biblical foundation. I mean, I, I was kind of prone to believe yeah. anything, you know. And that Joseph Smith was a prophet and that the leaders spoke for God and mm -hmm, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, so, go, started getting back into the church and, and learning much more than about it than I ever knew before. I mean, I embraced it pretty fast, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, she got me uh, my own quad, and I'm <laughs> reading the Book of Mormon, and, and I'm reading the Bible. You um, eventually get sealed in the temple. Yep, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that, took, that took a while. Um, I went and, and received uh, my endowments uh, a while before we got sealed. Yeah. And that was uh, that was an awkward experience, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, but like I've heard other people's stories, when you when you walk, when you get through the veil and you walk into that celestial room, and there's your spouse, and there was my my bishop who was like my personal mentor yeah. you know, at that time. There's yeah. other ward members. I mean, it seemed it very very right, strange. But here's all your 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 spouse and your yeah. best friends. You and know. they've been doing it for years yeah. usually. And oh, so. and they all have big huge smiles on their face. They're yeah. very excited for you. And uh, but you you just you keep going. You keep yeah. going back, and it becomes very normal. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So uh, we were sealed in the temple. Eventually, yeah. um, we're able to have uh, our son together, and then my son sealed to us oh, as wow. well. You so know. that was special. And yeah, yeah. Now you and mentioned she gave you a quad and precipitated a lot of study. Is that what you? Oh were? yeah. I, I think I interrupted you saying that. Oh yeah, and then then I mean, uh, one of my favorite books in the church was uh, Gospel Principles. You know, oh, yeah. um, I loved uh, going to the uh, investigators class, and then I loved even ap later on when I was had gone to go gospel doctrine for quite some time. Uh, I would go back and just go to the investigators class just to be there to be supportive and yeah. just because you know, that's almost that's almost like your basic training manual. Right, you know, right. so I, I love that. I love general conference. I love the whole deal. Just you know? active and busy mm -hmm. and oh yeah. yeah, serving in all in callings and yeah, the whole thing and. D d was there other th anything that came up to you besides maybe a little feeling about the temple, but anything that you ever had a question about? Yeah, I mean, I learned to, as I kept going to the, the temple, just learned to really love it. Yeah. Um, there, there was a question I had uh, kind of regarding the, the Book of Mormon, as I had followed President Hinckley's uh, advice to yeah. read the whole thing that year, as I know yeah. you did as yeah, well. Yeah, I did. And then I had read the New Testament of the Bible, and uh, after, after, after a while, you know, people kept saying, 
the Book of Mormon is so important. We have to read it every day. Fullness of the gospel. Full, the keystone, keystone of our religion. Yeah. You know, um, that men can get closer to God by reading it than any other book. You know, all these things. I, I remember thinking, you know, man, I've read the Book of Mormon. I've read the New Testament. There's really not much difference here. You know, <laughs> and I know now that you, other than four or five verses in the Book of Mormon, the Book of Mormon just teaches 19th century. Uh, Christianity, yeah. you know, and what's what's totally lacking from the Book of Mormon is Mormonism. I mean, it's it's just not current in there. Mormonism, right? No three degrees of glory, no, no uh, baptism for the dead, no temple work, no, none of that. No, no families are forever. No families, no no marriage wow. for time and all eternity. No Isn't pre no pre existence. Yeah, I mean, the, the distinctive teachings of Mormonism just aren't found in the Book of Mormon, and yeah. uh, I, I very much one God. Too, in oh, the Book oh of absolutely! Yeah, yeah. Alma eleven. Uh, so similar to the New Testament. That's yeah. interesting. You'd yeah. see that. I, I was blind to that forever. Yeah, and uh, the, one of the biggest doctrines that I struggled with, you know, you know even when I was so active, was uh, this concept of God once being a man and us becoming gods after this life. Do you sense the church is trying to pull away from that teaching oh. now? Oh, absolutely. Well, to, to go But, I mean, the, it's basic doctrine, isn't it, don't you course, think? Well, it's in the Gospel Principles Manual. Yeah. What's interesting is one of, one of the first chapters in the Gospel Principles Manual is about the nature of God. However, it doesn't mention that he used to be a man. That's in chapter 47. Oh. You know, toward the end of the <laughs> book where it cites <laughs> the, the, the King Follett discourse. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I struggle with that. What's, what really hit me, and it, it, it wasn't until I'd left the church, but was that he was probably a sinful man. You right, know? Um, yeah. Now that, that just never really hit me that, oh, I mean, it's one thing to say, well, God was once a man and man can become a God, but when you start saying get God was once a sinful man, right. he, he, then he, it when, starts when he was, putting him in a totally different category. When he was a man and he lived on an earth, he had to have had a savior, you know, yeah. and he had to rise to the level of Godhood. And so really what, as I've studied it out, um, Mormonism really just flips the biblical teachings of the gospel of Christ on, on its head. You yeah. know, matter is eternal, God's not. Um, God became uh, um, or God became a God by living out the law. So the law created God, not God Isn't giving us the law. So interesting. It's, it's, it's just a, a yeah. 180 all the way around. So. Wow. Now did you, uh, you uh, Sherry mentioned some things about the temple and the temple marriage that she, that you had and how she had to deal with that. Did you deal with that too? Kind oh. of the concept of having an inter inter eternal family and yeah, yeah. And like I said, I, I never really believed that I was going to become a god. And so, but one of the things that motivated you weren't <laughs> you weren't on the right path, or right. What, I did well, and, and that, that's one of the things I knew no matter how hard I tried and no matter what I did. I remember a picture of the temple and in, in each of the corners it gave you what you need to do daily, uh, weekly, monthly, and yearly. Like it's the checklist, you know, oh boy. and saying, okay, that's, that's awesome. We, we can do that, you know. So I'm following the checklist. I'm doing everything that, I, that I'm supposed to do. Wow. I never, ever felt that I was forgiven. I never knew where I was going after this life. I had no promise after this life yeah and so i was i always kind of figured i will probably end up in like the terrestrial kingdom <laughs> and sherry will probably go to the celestial yeah. you know so i never i never really felt that that the eternal family that the church promised would ever really play out for me anyway because i would probably oh never goodness. get there wow. you know so well sherry shared a, a little bit of of your visit in the park Yes, yes. And you, she mentioned that she, in her story that she'd kind of come to some decisions. And right. then, now tell us how you got to where you were at at the park. It started for me all social, you know, and um, struggling. We, we had moved from Missouri to Utah. Okay. In Missouri, our ward was our family. You know, I yeah, mean, that's the way it is out in the field, uh, right, the mission field. Right. Yeah. Move here and and not so much. You're just kind of a member of the ward. You're kind of a member. You're kind right. of, you live in the neighborhood. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, there's there's no family uh, feeling no, close, bond there. Close. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so that that was hard to deal with. Um, also, not having the missionaries over with any regularity was different for us. But then as our kids got older, 
and they started entering young men's and young women's, you know, and they started interacting with, really interacting at mutual and, and things like this, scout camps outs. Uh, with their peers, they they struggled, you know, mm. to to fit in and to to get along, and so after after a while, it's like I I could just see my kids growing up, becoming eighteen or so, moving out, not having a friendship with yeah. with anything. Well, and and not being able to differentiate between the church and God, you know, oh. and so I figured they're going to become adults and they're just going to throw it, throw it all out, you know. Oh, they're and, on their uh, own. They'll right. Yeah. Right. And I didn't want to see that happen. Sure. And as, as I'm starting to, to see that and think about that, I mean, there was a message put on my heart, and that was, which is more important, where you go on Sunday morning, or that you know me? Wow. And that's that, a that's a life changing question it? to have yeah. put on your heart. And and I knew I, I knew the answer. Sure. Um, but it still takes a while. It still, still takes a while. Well, it was so ingrained in us to oh, go to church every Sunday and listen to the leaders. And stuff. Well, but so I never wanted to stop going to church. Yeah. But after, but eventually, I had to deal with this, and I had to, to say, look, we we have to try something else out. But but what else is there? Yeah. You know, what else is there? So we went to a local Christian church one Sunday morning, and well, how? Oh, what was that decision like to make to g decide it, to go to a Christian church? It was huge. Sherry and I had had the talk, the talk in the park, which was very difficult. We drove around for quite a while before we ever stopped in the park, and and I ever actually brought it up, you know. But uh, yeah, she had a friend who had invited us okay. to go, you know. So it takes another Christian to reach out, you yeah. know, it really does. And yeah. so it's so it's so important that we reach out to right. folks. And uh, so we, we had been invited. We went. It is it just blew my mind. I mean, I didn't know what to think at all. You know, people, these people are raising their hands and singing loudly and all to Jesus. All to, right? Yeah, yeah. It's all about it's, it was all about Jesus praying to Jesus. And uh, yeah. so the whole the whole initial part of the service was was mind blowing. And then it came to the sermon itself, and it was just excellent. It was. It was excellent. I'm, I'm sitting there, almost like biting my lip, you know, and leaning in and, and listening to this this guy preach things that you'd never really right. heard in those re in, the, oh, in yeah. those terms in yeah. Mormonism. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then we were having those experiences. I also have a brother who's uh, a born again Christian. And uh, he would share. He would just share things on on Facebook and social media periodically. Even while you were active LDS. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. He he worked with like everybody he worked with was LDS back in Missouri. Oh, so it was man. very strange. He's not all Mormon co-workers, a Mormon brother, you know. Yeah. And here he is. Were you listening Christian. to him at all? No, not no. not for a long time. He dismissed everything he said. Right. And, yeah. But eventually he posted. Uh, this this little poem, like a four minute long poem, yeah. and I'd seen it a couple of times. He had posted it, and uh, finally I I uh, said, "This is this is speaking to me. I need to look into this further." So I went to this YouTube channel, and this this same kid gave like a forty five minute explanation of the four minute of poem. the four minute poem. Okay, right, and uh, basically it's just a, a basic presentation of the gospel of grace that uh, Jesus is enough. That uh, there is paid nothing for our sins, pa paid for our sins that He paid it in full. That there is nothing to add to the risen Christ. That Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Had you ever heard that message? Never, before? never heard that. Never. Not at least you know my, my my wife will tell you that that she would speak that way, but but you weren't hearing it. No, wasn't hearing it. I did not have the ears uh, to hear. I, I didn't know. have the eyes to see. Isn't that amazing? But uh, through the the Lord speaking into my heart yeah. through actually you know, just being willing to look at something different. Um, I heard that, and that is my born-again experience. I mean, Just it, then you knew this is a message that's yes, true. absolutely. Yeah. We, we had looked into this, this other Christian church, and on their website they talked about salvation, yeah. and it talked about water baptism. And I was like, well, water, what's, what other baptism is there? You know, I mean, duh, it's, of course it's water baptism. But it said that baptism is not salvation. And I thought, well, that was shocking, wasn't it? Well, I thought, of course, baptism isn't salvation. Salvation's what I do and don't do. That's wow. what brings salvation. And so I was, I was still, you know, so so far <laughs> from the, an understanding of, of grace. Yeah. And you know, I always call myself a, a bottom line person, though. And in, in this context, it's I'm I'm here. Eventually, I'm going to die. I want to be in heaven. 
with mm-hmm. God, what makes that possible? And to me, that's that's one of the biggest you know wow. contrast between Mormonism and Christianity is how do I get there? Yeah. And and uh, you know, I had a Mormon friend who told me that uh, it's like a trillion mile race, and uh, he runs as far and as fast as he can, and when he can't go any further, Jesus takes over and yeah. and does the rest. Yeah, that's the whole. And so I, I asked him, so how far do you think you've made it so far on this trillion mile on race? This trillion mile race. And there wasn't an answer. Um, but I can tell you how, our, how far I made it. I was dead on the starting line. I was on the ground. I, knew, oh. I went nowhere. He picked me up, yeah. and he ran that trillion mile race with me the whole way. That's, that's a Jesus and a God that we can respect and Absolutely. have that, that's, all awe for. That's Jesus, who was not my older brother. No. Um, he's not my co-savior because I believe that's what Jesus is in Mormonism. That's he's a, true. He's isn't a co-savior. It? Kind of like he and I. It's me and him. We're we're both saving me. Um, he's not my older brother. He's my God who saved me. Wow. He's the only chance that I have, uh, and he's and he's my my surety. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to stand before the Lord and. Uh, Proclaim these this righteousness through my life. All the things that I've done well. Right, <laughs> Matthew seven, um, third Nephi thirteen. That's the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, many will will say, Lord, Lord, have I not done all these, performed these yeah. these miracles and cast out demons and all these things in your name? And he says, I never knew you. I never knew you. And reading that as a Latter Day Saint, I'm just no idea what that means but it's in the bible and yeah. it's in the book of mormon yeah. no idea what that means you know yeah. and so uh yeah it's because i'm going to stand before him i i have nothing to offer him he doesn't want me going before him with arms full of these these good works that, yeah, that the i've law done and the dead right. works and right he wants yeah. me to go to him with empty hands and thankfulness and a recipient and a, and a belief of his mercy and, and his grace absolutely yeah. so Back to the park just a little okay. bit. What was your reaction to what Sherry had to say and her reaction to what you had to say? Because she kind of indicated that this you were both coming at this not really uh, independently of each other. Correct. Uh, our, ours is a great story of the, the wheat and the tares, you know. <laughs> um, but I was, I was very, very relieved to hear that she had doubts as well. Wow. Um, the Lord had been working on both of us, but he did work on us independently yeah. you know and that was our time of coming together and saying okay now the Lord's going to work on us together yeah. you know for her though it was it's it's the wheat and the tares where she was a Christian before and then had learned about Mormonism yeah. had kind of grown up you know both of those things together so it was a little bit harder for her to be able to have to go in and pick out the weeds from the wheat <laughs> yeah you know? for me it was much easier it was just go in and whack it all down you know, because I was I was a 100% Mormon. I mean, there was nothing else. Yeah. You know, and uh, so we worked through it. Yeah, you know, like I said, independently, um, but together, and and it it's definitely brought us closer, closer together. together. And now you have this trust, don't you? In, oh yeah. In in confidence in going to heaven. And we can talk and we can talk to each other about what the Bible says. We can talk to each other about something we heard at church and yeah. what does this make sense? Did, what do you think about this? And we don't have to be worried about the other, you know, being upset or, or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, one thing that's interesting, do you know more about Mormonism now than oh. you did as a Mormon? Absolutely. Yeah. Ab- there, there, there's no doubt. Me too. I yeah. just have learned so much. Well, and uh, we started going to a Christian church and had gone for probably four months, something like that. And in the beginning, we were going, one week we'd go to the ward, one week we'd go really? to Really? You to went to both? <laughs> mm-hmm. I think one time we went to both in the same day. Oh. You know. Did and, you really uh, start seeing some contrast oh, there's and difference? Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then it's, it's plain as day. Yeah. And especially, I mean, I had been born again. My eyes were open. The heart of stone, Ezekiel 36 talked about your heart of stone being changed to a heart of, of flesh. I'll put in yeah. you a new spirit, you know. New and creature, so, born again, of well, the, born of the spirit, yeah. Reading the Bible. You st- I, I know you've talked about reading through John. I thought somebody had snuck in and put verses in. You know, I'm sitting there going, I thought that, yeah. I've never read this before. I've got stuff highlighted, so I know I read it, <laughs> you know. Uh, so it was, it was a completely and, and totally amazing? different thing. Yeah. yeah. How did the kids react? You know, they were, they were, they were younger. Um, like Sherry talked about, our oldest um, has, had had questions had to, of, yeah. of his own. 
and so uh, to them I'm sure it was very confusing and you know as far as our family it was it was more difficult yeah. um, but just they were they were they were fine yeah. going with where we wanted to go yeah. and uh, it, we have, of course, had to have, we, we still have, we still call it family home evening. Uh, we haven't even changed what we call it, you know, <laughs> only we just sing contemporary Christian songs. We have lessons out of the Bible, wow. you know, and, and we've had to sit down and, and have a lot of the discussions. Um, kids bringing up things about the pre-existence, kids bringing up things about um, the celestial kingdom and things like that, yeah. uh, that we have to still have to talk to them about yeah. on occasion and help them understand. But when it came down, down to it, we didn't make any of our kids get baptized at the age of eight. We said, you need to go and pray about it and let us know what you want to do. Yeah. We didn't make any of our kids decide to leave the church. You know, mm. um, They signed the, the resignation letter We about a two years now, a year and a half ago, is when we send in resignation when we sent that in yeah. and uh, they, they signed that of their own free will and choice Wow. Um, however our youngest was ne he wasn't eight yet yeah so uh, he was never a member of the church so I don't know if we have time to go into his baptism story or if we're out well of time. we're a couple of minutes left okay. I, I go ahead. So, so quickly he was almost eight as we were leaving as we were going to a Christian church um, he wasn't sure if he wanted to get baptized at the ward or in the Christian church. We said, son, you have to go and pray. You know, we, you, you can know what you're supposed to do. He came to us in tears saying, uh, I know I'm supposed to get baptized at the Christian church, but I don't want to because my friends won't think it's real. And so I'm telling you that right there. For, for me, hard. you know, I had been out, out <laughs> for a while. That's when my wife's like, Okay. This we're, is it, you know. <laughs> and um, so we, I, I baptized him at a, a, in a park in Layton. They were having a, a church picnic, and they decided to do baptisms in the park. I baptized him. That there must were, have been thrilling. They, they, well, that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, there were uh, local local LDS leaders there of ours wow. who had been invited. Yeah. Um, I was still a member of the church at the time, though, so I'm not sure. I, should, <laughs> I could have been in some trouble with that. Uh, but I wasn't and was able to just resign our membership. And wow. uh, But no, we're just trying the best we can to walk with the Lord. And we, we know that it's not a, you're saved by grace, now I just sit back and wait for the yeah, rapture. it's not that way, is it? No, it's, oh, absolutely not. I always thought Christians think. Work because of faith. Yeah, now I can just sit back and do nothing. No, that's yeah. that's not it at all. And so just it's a life dedicated to the Lord in His in His service, and it's all about Him. Wow. Well, Jared, believe it or not, the time's gone. <laughs> it, it goes so fast. But um, I just really appreciate your you and your wife's sweet stories. They're just wonderful. And, and you know, you really made an effort to come back to the church to try mm -hmm. to make it work. And like she said, it actually drew her further away yeah. from Jesus and her relationship. Definitely. So, Appreciate you sharing your story. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate you joining us tonight. We'll see you next week. Good night.